Happy Monday here at the Scarlet Faithful Podcast. I'm Aaron Brightman. This episode, you know, it's a, it's a wild, wild west in terms of college basketball offseason happening at the same time as the postseason, the NIT and the NCAA tournament kicking off this week. Selection Sunday just occurred and the transfer portal opened here on Monday and Rutgers already getting some news here in terms of players entering the portal. So it's ever changing. It's completely fluid. Things are going to just be rapid fire here for a little while. I think Rutgers uh, wanting to figure out who's coming, who's going and get that roster set as soon as possible in the off season, which is no easy task whatsoever in this day and age. Certainly want to avoid last season, Steve Peichel talking after senior day and a loss to Ohio State in regard to how late they went into the offseason in figuring out the roster, had those late departures, of course, with Cam Spencer and Paul Mulcahy. And having the offseason begin so early with unfortunately not making the postseason really is a helpful, I think, in terms of roster construction now in the offseason, you're seeing teams uh, not playing in the NIT, wanting to just get a jump on next season's roster at St. John's, most notably uh, some other schools as well that I'm kind of blanking on. Indiana's another. Uh, so Rutgers in the same boat without the option of going to the NIT, although there were some teams with losing records that are going to the NIT. That's a discussion for another day. But what we know so far, I've been able to confirm, uh, and there's been other reports as well, uh, but Derek Simpson just came out uh, in terms of, uh, and I was able to confirm that he's entered the transfer portal. Also, Antonio Troll, which was previously reported last week. Uh, and then also two walk-ons so far, Jacob Morales and Daniel Vesey. So that's two scholarship players for Rutgers that have officially entered the transfer portal. Again, this is so uh, fluid that by the time I get this out, I mean, an hour later, someone else could go in. Uh, obviously, end-of-season conversations are occurring. I've talked about uh, last week just the guard situation with Rutgers and if Jeremiah Williams and Jermichael Davis do return, which they're expected to, Jermichael Davis, I would think is the most likely Rutgers player to return next year based on his uh, growth as a freshman, but also uh, his friendship, longtime friendship with Ace Bailey, uh, the top recruit coming in. Uh, for Rutgers this offseason, uh, highly anticipated uh, entry into the program. Uh, seems pretty likely he'll be back. And obviously got a lot of playing time as a freshman, did some good things, struggled shooting the ball. Uh, but then Jeremiah Williams, you know, who obviously uh, showed out some here at the end of the season after becoming eligible with the two-time transfer rule being waived and then his gambling suspension being lifted. Uh, he... Did some good things as well, spurred that four-game winning streak for Rutgers. So both of them are expected to be back. You obviously have Dylan Harper, another top recruit. Bailey, Ace Bailey, and Dylan Harper, two five-star, top three or four. The rankings changed a little bit, but uh, obviously a power duo. But Dylan Harper, Jeremiah Williams, and Jermichael Davis, that reality made it tough for Derek Simpson to return. And I think, honestly, this is the best move for both the program and Derek Simpson. Derek Simpson looking to go elsewhere um he did some good things for this program he uh certainly developed on the defensive end unfortunately offensively uh his decision making and his shot making really lacked this year um he was thrust into a bigger role than previously expected after the departures of cam spencer and paul mulcahy and it's tough. You know, he's extremely likable. I've spoken to him several times. I've had him on the podcast before. I have a video uh, from, you know, preseason media day. Uh, he was super likable uh, and really wanted uh, the best for the program. And uh, unfortunately, he just uh, did not develop this past season the way everyone had hoped. And, and you know, oh, I think no fans as a three-star recruit. You know, the obvious comparisons to Geo Baker, uh, again, no one's fault. But I, I think it, it it certainly did not make it easier for him. And then having to uh, emerge right away uh, after really not playing that much as a freshman, not nearly as much as Jermichael Davis did, and needing to be a starter and, and kind of 
run the offense and, and, and lead the charge, uh, it just didn't work. It didn't work. And, um, you know, it's not for a lack of trying with Derek Simpson and with the coaching staff. Uh, but I think that uh, results never really changed. I still thought, unfortunately, you know, some of his decision making with his shots uh, fell in love with that mid range jumper, did not get to the rim the way he did at times as, as effectively as last year and just really struggled to make shots. Uh, I'm not going to go. I, I don't have his stats in front of me, but I mean, he shot low 30% for the season. Um, and, uh, you know, it just, it, it never got better for him. And uh, it was, it was a big part of why Rucker struggled so much offensively. Uh, he had games where he was a great distributor and then he had other games where he, he didn't do much of that at all. Uh, he was very reliant on his first couple of shots. And then, if they went down, great. And if they didn't, uh, things kind of went south. So uh, it's unfortunate. He's a Jersey kid, uh, really good family. Uh, by all accounts, was a stand-up, uh, you know, kid in the program. But uh, we'll see where he ultimately lands. I think you know, uh, dropping down a level could be really beneficial for him. I think he could. Well, I mean, who knows? Long term, right? I mean, the, the portal. He could have a really good year somewhere at a lower level and then bounce back up to a high major. I still think he could be a role player for a high major program. Uh, but I think for Rutgers in terms of uh, the time available that was going to be there for him next year, I think it makes sense for him to go and develop and grow somewhere else. And I think for Rutgers, you know, I talked about the, the, the makeup of the backcourt, you know, with Simpson, Davis, Williams and Harper. I mean, you, I really believe that you need as many shooters as possible not only for the health of the, of the program and uh, the ceiling of next year's team, but also just in terms of how your backcourt's constructed. You can't have four guards that all need the ball in their hands that can all drive. But, uh, you know, Dylan has, hasn't had a chance to prove it yet. I think he's going to be a good three-point shooter at the college level. Uh, so far, Jeremiah Williams, Jermichael Davis, and Derek Simpson have not proven to be good three-point shooters at the college level. So you need shooters. You need guys with different makeups. And and Jermichael Davis and, and Derek Simpson were two like for like. And again, Davis unlikely to leave. I think that made the decision probably easier for Simpson, knowing there was a little bit of a log jam there. So I think it's positive that he's made the decision quickly. I think it's good for both him and Rutgers in terms of doing it quickly. He's going to have you know a range of options come to him rather uh, swiftly. And Rutgers can immediately start looking for a guard. Uh, you know, in terms of the scholarship limit, you know, Rutgers needs guys to leave to be under that limit. You can have 13 scholarship players uh, under control uh, with uh, Simpson and Troll now. They're back at 13. If everybody else returned, um, that is highly unlikely. Uh, still waiting on decisions from Mawat Mag, from Cliff Omori, uh, from uh, anyone else on the roster. I've mentioned that I thought Igbole and uh, Antoine Wolfolk Kind of where, where Simpson Davis dynamic, kind of like for like there. Uh, so, you know, would not be surprised if one of them ultimately left. Uh, you have Oscar Palmquist who has to make the, a decision. Uh, so, there's there could be, I mean, I, I've talked about it before in previous podcasts, but I expect several guys to leave. And again, it's not a, necessarily an indictment of the program at all. I think it's just a matter of fit. And it's also guys checking their value, market value. NIL's changed everything. And that is going to be a factor. And I think as much as intent, well-intentioned as Rutgers is to get things set as so, soon as possible, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard simply because of the reality of the NIL. I mean, the transfer portal window for undergrads is open for 45 days now. Uh, then it's going to close, but then the grad transfers will have a separate window. There's the NBA entry deadline, which I don't think is going to impact Rutgers at all. But um, there's there's two separate windows there, and it's – it's um, it's going to be challenging. So the next six weeks is going to be a roller coaster, um, just in terms of uh, who they add as, as aside from who leaves. So we'll find out soon. I think, I, I think in the next week, things will shake out in terms of who's actually entering the portal in this first round. Hopefully that's all that it is that what, whoever does want to leave does leave and whoever stays will stay. Uh, you need that stability, but it's not a perfect system. It's not even close to a perfect system. So, the reality is you're constantly going to have to be recruiting your roster and building your roster. It's a, it's a 24 seven, 365 deal. Uh, this is the part of the program that I, on my own promote the fact that, Hey, if you want to help 
get involved with with the collective, whether it's the Nice Society or Knights of the Raritan. Donate uh, resources, uh, become a member because Rutgers needs help, and not just basketball. All the coaches, all the programs, every program needs NIL help because this is just uh, the microscope is on basketball right now, but it but it happens in every sport. So, uh, in terms of Rutgers basketball, you know a little bit more here on the first day of the portal. Again, more could happen as the as the night uh, enters. Uh, but uh, right now, we know Antonio Troll, who just can never break into the rotation, and then Derek Simpson, who was a key starter uh, for this team, might as well just uh, end up uh, looking up his stats. But uh, in terms of when I'm on Kim Palm right now, uh, for Derek Simpson, looking at the, the team, uh, Rutgers right now at 100 for what it's worth. But Derek Simpson, uh, yeah, his offensive rating was just under 90 which is pretty tough. Uh, he shot just uh, 86.4% from the foul line, which was 93rd best nationally, 70 of 81. So that he was very valuable there. He's a, a really good uh, defender. He was 179th in steal rate nationally at 3.1. Um, and uh, his assist rate, he had a pretty good assist rate, 23.4%, 252nd best nationally. Um, but shooting... Two point percentage, just thirty one point three percent. That's a big struggle. He was number two on the team in shot attempts, so obviously a negative factor there. And he shot just twenty eight point two percent from three point range, twenty to seventy one. Derek Simpson moving on, Antonio Troll moving on, two walk ins, Daniel Vesey, Jacob Morales moving on. There's going to be plenty more to come in terms of who uh, ultimately enters the portal. Uh, no timetable, but again, today's just the first day, Monday. Expect more to enter the portal. Ultimately, there's a lot of names out there in terms of guys that have entered the portal that Rutgers could potentially be involved in. I don't really want to get into that yet because a lot of it's speculative. And um, I think Rutgers is going to try to, you know, find replacements as soon as they can. But that's obviously a process. You know, got to get guys come visit. Uh, you know, NIL is involved in all that. So uh, things, it's going to it's going to be a uh, tenuous offseason in terms of patience. <laughs> and uh we're going to get you through it. I want to thank everyone. I have uh, now uh, over a thousand subscribers to the YouTube channel. My followers on uh, Apple and Spotify or Apple's over 500. I think Spotify is close to that. So really appreciate everyone that listens and watches this podcast on various platforms. I'm also over 11,000 uh, followers on Twitter now. You should follow me on Twitter because sometimes, especially when breaking news now, I'm going to get things out there right away and then I'll get on the podcast and talk about it. But um Appreciate everyone that listens and watches watches the Scholar Faithful podcast. Uh, you know, and this is going to be quite the off season. Obviously, pivotal for Rutgers basketball. Steve Peichel and the staff hard at work, and uh, it's going to be fascinating. I wanted to get into some things about uh, analytics and, and the NCAA tournament. Don't want to make this too long today. Wanted to get this out right away. Uh, the Derek Simpson news just broke, so I'm going to get this out, and uh, we'll plenty to talk about this week. Also, we'll have a wrestling preview. For Nationals, which begin on Thursday, full preview with Eric Vesper coming later this week as well. Tune in for that, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Who knows? Maybe sooner. If some bigger names hit the portal tonight, I'll be back. Talk to you soon. 